Now there's a couple of different ways that you can add a reflection. Um, this particular image, when I started with this image, I had this image right here. And in this particular technique, you make a selection of something within your image where you want to add the water. And then you, you turn that selection into the reflected water. Uh, the other technique that you use, you actually take an image that has sort of a flat horizon, and then you duplicate the image and you make the whole image, you turn the whole image upside down and you make the water the other half of the image. So this technique is for someone who's starting out learning this tech, learning the te technique of adding water. This second technique of just turn, duplicating the image is probably a little bit easier to learn. So that's the technique that I'm going to show you tonight. Now, there's a third technique that we don't have time for tonight that's very complicated. And that's if you had an image that had perspective, like maybe you had, um, a, say, a fairway to a golf course or something, and you had um, a like a vanishing point, for instance, where you had a tree line or something that went way back in and you had you wanted to add that water so that the water was up along the tree line of that golf course. It's a little more difficult because you're not using a flat horizon line, you have to actually build your selection with angles. And so that takes about 30 minutes to build one like that. And we, we don't want to spend all of our time tonight showing you that technique. So I'm just going to show you this flatten technique that you're going to get something very similar to this. So let's go back to this image um, as our starter image, and we'll show you the technique for uh, adding this image it into a reflection. So the first thing that you want to do is we're going to we're going to take and un undo the back this image as a background. And the first thing we want to do is to duplicate the the background image, and we're going to name this layer reflection. And then what we're going to do is we're going to um, go to our canvas size and we're going to anchor the top of our canvas by clicking on the little button here and anchoring it at the top. And then we're going to switch from inches to percentage and we're going to increase the height of our canvas to 200% and click OK. And you'll see now that I have increased the height of my canvas to 200%. Now I'm going to take this reflection and I'm going to put it underneath. I'm going to select, I'm going to select that image, put, go into the transform mode and select it. And then I'm going to flip it vertically and I'm going to move it down underneath my other image. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can match it up well. And click OK. So now I have my original image and I have my reflection underneath it. OK. So now I'm going to put a blank layer below my reflection. And if you hold the control key down and click on add new layer, it will automatically add that blank layer uh, below, below your uh, whatever uh, layer you're currently on. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add a watercolor uh, be the, uh, below the, uh, the reflection so that we can simulate this as a watercolor. And then we're going to gradually add some of that uh, watercolor 
to let it come through so it looks like water. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick a watery color for our foreground color. So we're going to click on our foreground color and we're going to come over here and we're going to pick some kind of a nice uh, bluish color. You can actually pick a color from the image if you like, or you can just come over here and pick something that you like, like one of these uh, blue colors. And then, so once we have that in our foreground color, we're going to come over and we're going to load the reflection. We're going to load the reflection as a selection so that we have the size that we want. We're pointing to the image the uh, blank layer that's underneath and then we're going to come up here and we're going to fill the blank canvas with the foreground color that pretty blue that we just picked and you'll see that you don't see anything right now because we uh, it's hidden from the reflection of up above uh, so go now we're going to select the reflection layer again and we're going to add a mask and we're going to go to our gradient tool we're going to make sure that we switch back to black and white as our colors in our color palette with black as the primary color and white as your background color we're going to come up here to our gradients and we're going to make sure that we have foreground to background as the gradient that we have picked and then we're going to pick our gradient tool and we're going to work on the mask, the reflection mask. And we're going to pull a gradient across the water, holding our shift key down so that we it stays straight. And then we, are, we now have our water reflection with just a little bit of that mountain showing through and the water showing through on the bottom. So now we have we have the color, but we haven't got any water movement yet. So now we have to go over here to the water, the, the mountain that's underneath, and we have to make this look like water. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some motion blur there. We're going to come up here to the filter. We're going to go to blur, and we're going to go to motion blur. Make sure that your angle is at 90 degrees and we're going to put in some motion blur at somewhere between 15 to 20, 25. It's really your choice of how much blur you want in that water. Um, I'm going to set it at about 15. Um, again, this will depend on the pixel size of your image. If your image is really small, you're probably going to want to back that off. If you've got a really high resolution image, you might want to push it up a little bit. So now we put a little bit of motion blur in there. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we want to make the waves across the water this way. And for this, we're going to put a displacement mask on here. Now, I've already built the displacement mask uh, map. I'm going to apply the displacement map to this image. And then once we do that, I'm going to stop and I'm going to show you how to build a displacement map. Um, again, this is another artifact that you will be able to add to your library. And every time you need to distort water, whenever you're building a composite, you will be able to reuse this artifact over and over and over again. So this is something that you will be able to put in your library and, and keep and use many, many, many times. So I'm going to apply it here so you see what the effect of it is, and then I'm going to show you how to build it. So we're going to come over here to the walk, to the reflection, not on the mask. We're going to come on the image itself. We are going to hold our control button, and we're going to load it as a selection. So hold control, click on the, re the, the mountains that are upside down. That's the reflection. We're going to come up here to filter. We're going to go to distort and we're going to hit displace. These filters are taking a really long time to load tonight. So we'll just give it a second to think about it. 
and it's going to open up a dialog box. Sooner or later, it will open. There it is. Now, let me explain to you what this dialog box means. Horizontal scale and vertical scale. Again, these will vary with how big of an image you have. The horizontal and vertical scale means how much wave activity you're going to get in the water. You always want your vertical scale to be twice as big as your horizontal scale. So if I put 50 here, I need 100 here. These two settings down here, you will get your best results by just leaving them at stretch to fit and repeat your edge pixels. That's, that's just the best results that you'll always get using this displays. You can try a set of settings like 25, 50, 50, 100, whatever. And if you don't get as much movement as you like, just apply it again. There's no problem with just going back in and applying it again. I'm going to try 50 and 100 and see how much water movement we get. And if we want it to be more or less, we'll just try it again. So once you put your settings in here and click OK, it's going to ask you to um, load the displacement map that you previously built. So I now have to go in and load my displacement map, which I have already built. And it's right here, compound displacement map. I'm going to click on that and say, open this one. And once it loads that, it's going to displace my water based on that displacement map. Eventually, this is really slow. There we go. So you can see now we have water that moved up and down with some motion. And now I've got my waves in here because I distorted it. Now, the one thing that this will do is it's going to give you kind of funky stuff right on your edges. It always does. Um, and it might give you some funky stuff down here at this edge. Um, so what you do is you grab both of these. Um, and then you just, let me zoom out so you can see what I'm doing. You just grab both of these, go into transform, hold your shift key, and just kind of slide these things out a little bit. It's just a function of this technique. And if and so that's what you do. Now, some other technique, this is usually all that YouTube will give you is just this much. But what I normally do to make this a little more realistic is I go in and I put a I go in and I put a curves on here. I pull down a curves because right the water at the edge um, is always a little darker. So I put my curves on. And then let me put re redock this thing so that my properties are down here where they belong. And then I put a black mask. I turn this map mask to black with control I. You can invert the mask. And then I Paint a little bit of white with a soft brush right along the edge to kind of darken that edge a little bit, just to give it a little bit more realism. And then the other thing is sometimes you get a really, really harsh line right here. So sometimes I put a mask up here on this edge and I grab my horizontal marquee tool right on that edge, put on the horizontal marquee right there across that edge, go into my that selection and feather that selection like with 40 pixels or so. And then I just... Um, with black paint, I just kind of, you know, feathered that back a little bit so that there's not a really sharp edge 
right there at the border. And you can't tell where the water starts and the, where the, the land stopped. So those are a couple little additional techniques that I normally do that the YouTube videos probably won't tell you about. So there you have it. Now, the other thing you can do once you have that all done, you can stamp up, you know, make a, uh, you know, control alt shift E um, up. And then if you want to, you can, you can uh, crop this out if you wanted to then resize, um, resize your, um, Uh, you know, your picture to, um, why is this thing doing this? I want to be able to uh, just do what I want to do here. Let me see here. I want to escape out of that. If I wanted to just size this up a little bit, maybe, and I don't want all of that, you know, if I want to resize that up a little bit and not have as much reflection, I could... I could change it. So anyway, that's how you do the reflection. Now let's quickly, let's build the displacement map for you. Let me close all this stuff up and show you how to build that displacement map. So here's how you build the displacement map. Um, and again, this is one of those things that once you build it, there's two different techniques to build a displacement map. There's the compound one, which is the one we used. And there is a simple grayscale one. I recommend you just build the, the um, build the compound one because uh, you can use it for everything. So the first thing you want to do is you want to build a canvas, and you want that canvas to be uh, three thousand pixels by six thousand. If you go to YouTube, they're going to tell you to build it like 1,000 by 2,000, but I'm telling you that's way too small. When you use your high-resolution images, you're not going to get very good water. I, I Believe me, I've done it. I built the small ones, and they're, and they're trash. So just build you a nice one with 3,000 by 6,000 and do it this way, and you'll be much happier. So here's what we're going to do. Build that canvas. And then the first thing you're going to do is you're going to make sure you got black and white as your foreground and black, black background colors. You're going to go into filter. You're going to go to noise. You're going to add noise. Make sure you're at 400 noise, Gaussian, and monochrome. Then you're going to go to your filter and you're going to do um, a little bit of Gaussian blur, like two pixels of Gaussian blur. Then you're going to go over here to channels. And I, I I don't I don't have time tonight to explain to you all of the the uh, logic behind this, so I'm just going to give you the steps. But if you want to get into the engineering of it, we could do that at another time. Um, but I will tell you, the red channel moves your water up and down, and the green channel moves it side to side, and the blue channel doesn't move your water at all. So we're going to go to the red channel, and I'm going to zoom in here a little bit so you can see these dots. The red channel, we're going to go over here to um, we're going to go over here to filter, stylize, emboss, and see how it made these little bumps. And we're going to go to 180 degrees. Have your height at one and your amount to 500 and click OK. Then we're going to go to the green channel and we're going to go back to stylize, filter, stylize, emboss, and we're going to go to 90 degrees because that moves it the other way. Height one, amount 500, click OK. And then we're going to go down to the blue channel and we're going to just fill it with black because it doesn't play in the game. And what you're going to end up with is this really pretty uh, red and green dots on a yellow background. So you're going to come back over here to your layers panel because you're going to turn everything back on. You're going to come back over here to your layers panel and you're going to zoom way out. 
because we now have dots, but that doesn't look a lot like water. And what we have to do is we need to turn this into uh, the perspective of water. And how we're going to do that is we're going to transform this thing. We're going to go into the transform mode, unlock it, go into the transform mode, and we're going to go up here to transform perspective. And we're going to pull this thing out like crazy, like almost 3,000. Like, see up here, it's like almost 3,000. And we're going to hit OK. Enter. And then when we come back here and we look at it, see how we got water? But we can't have those things sticking way out at the side. So we have to come back in here to crop. And we have to crop it back to the canvas size. And then we got to do it again because that's not enough. We need we need we need it more at the bottom. So we're going to do it again. We're going to go in here, control T, and then we're going to go back to edit, transform, perspective, and we're going to pull it out <clears throat> a little bit more. We're not going to use all of this. We're only going to use this pretty stuff in the middle. So we're going to pull it out maybe another two or three hundred, and then we're going to hit check. So that's what we want. Now we're going to go up here and we're going to crop it again to get rid of all that stuff on the sides. <clears throat> and now we're going to go up here to ratio and we're going to set our ratio one to one. And we're going to move this thing so that we can get the nice stuff. So let me, let me uh, uncrop this for a minute. Oh, shoot. Let me show you the stuff here at the top. See all this junk up here? It's way, way, way too tiny. And all this stuff down here is way, way, way too wide. So we want we want to build our map with this really nice stuff in the middle where it has a nice progression in and a nice and nice waves here in the front. So when we put this on our image, we get that nice depth perception and flow that's normal. So we want to go in here to our crop tool, take that one to one ratio, and then we want to move it around until we get a nice, a nice uh, image so that it's just about where we got a nice depth perception on the outside. And it's just about where we want it. And then we can hit the OK. And now we have that nice square. And then you want to save it. And you're saving this image. We're saving this image in the mode of RBG and 8-bit. If we had done a grayscale one, we would switch over to save it in grayscale. But we're doing the compound color one, so we want to save it as grayscale. So you can just now save it and just save it as you know compound displacement map or name it anything you want to name it displacement map and now you again you have a nice artifact that every time you use distort, distort displace you will load that thing and it'll give you that beautiful water effect um and depending on how much water displacement you want the bigger the numbers the more you're going to get in your water